Hi, my name is Kylie Fawcett. I'm a student at Bridgeport Regional Aquaculture Science and Technology Education Center. I decided to go to this school and go into science as a career because I have the opportunity to work with awesome instruments like these. Uh, they're fun and I get to do a lot of cool experiments on them. Today we're going to be doing an experiment on the CSIL 2041 sold by Buck Scientific on finding the lambda mac of aspirin or acetylsalicylic acid. During this experiment we'll be using a few different materials. We have pure acetylsalicylic acid, which is aspirin, the ethyl alcohol, which we're going to dissolve the aspirin in to run, our cuvettes, which will go in the instrument, and some pipettes. To start this experiment, we're going to turn on the instrument. There's a simple toggle switch at the back of the uh, instrument that you switch on. The instrument takes about 10 to 15 minutes to warm up. During this time, there should be a small thing that prints. It'll say the serial number, the time, a self-check, which it should say OK, and the calibration, which also has to say OK. For the purpose of this film, we've already started out the instrument. The next step is to run the baseline. You're going to hit scan, scroll down, to store the baseline, enter. We're going to start at 200 uh, nanometers, enter. Up to 550 nanometers, enter. A speed of 10. Um, and then we're going to load in a sample of the ethyl alcohol. It's important to make sure the cuvette is clear of any dust or other debris that might have gotten on the outside or inside of it. It's also important to check for bubbles and other floating material. Once you're sure there's nothing in it, you can open the instrument and insert it in the little area for the cuvette. It's important that the frosted sides of the cuvette are facing to the left and right and that the key was facing forward. After that's all set, you can rent, uh, hit run print. So now it has the baseline of the ethyl alcohol. After a few minutes, the instrument should take you to a different screen. It'll say scan, and this is when you're going to start running your sample. It's going to ask for a starting wavelength. You're going to say 200 nanometers, and you hit enter. The when you're going to end is 400 nanometers. Enter. The speed is 10. The scale is uh, 25 nanometers per centimeter. The min absorbance is zero, and the max is two. Next, it's going to say load sample. This is when we're going to start running our sample. We've already prepared in the cuvette a mixture of the aspirin and the ethyl alcohol. It's important to use only a small amount of the aspirin because it's very active in the UV region. After checking that there's no dust or debris on the outside, especially fingerprints, you place it into the cuvette holder in the instrument again, making sure that the cue is facing forward and the two frosted sides are to your left and right. Next step is to hit run print. It'll take a few minutes, but now the instrument is scanning the sample. So when the instrument is done scanning, it'll bring you to a screen that looks like this. You can observe the uh, graph it just printed by scrolling to the left or scrolling to the right. If you're content with the screen and you like the scan you have, you can hit Run Print, which is the blinking button right here. If you don't like it, such as the peaks aren't visible or you need to dilute it, you can hit Next, which will bring you to the last screen where you put in the wavelengths again and it's not a big deal. Our, our scan came out okay, so we're going to hit Run Print. The instrument is going to print it for us. After the experiment, you come away with a few different scans. So to start off with, you have your baseline and the startup calibration um, scan. These are important to keep just to verify your experiment is run in a controlled condition. Next, you have both the graph and the table that comes with the scan. The graph is graphed on absorbance for nanometer. And then you have the, the table to show you the peaks and valleys of that scan. 
The first peak you have here, the one that goes off the skin, isn't very important because this comes from the alcohol and that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the aspirin. The peak right here is the aspirin. It happens at 275.5 nanometers with an absorbance of 1.067. This is an important peak because being the biggest one of the aspirin, it is the lambda max. So with this skin, we can determine that the lambda max of aspirin is at 275 nanometers. So this will conclude our experiment. Thank you for watching. Once again, this was determining the lambda max of aspirin using a Buck Scientific C-Cell 2041. Hi, this is our classroom setting of our chemistry laboratory. In here, we have the C-Cell from Buck Scientific. To help me with some questions, I have John Meller, product manager of Buck Scientific. John, what would happen if I touch the non-frosted side of a cuvette before I put it in? It would, it would mess up the optical path of the cuvette and would cause bad readings or a bad baseline in the instrument. So how would I fix it if I did? Clean it. <laughs> okay. Um, and then also, if I run a scan and I get a bunch of jagged peaks instead of the smooth peak that we are expecting, what should I do? And what does that mean? Could mean a contaminated sample. Okay. In which case, redo your sample preparation. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs>